Hey everybody, welcome back to Smoky Hill Bonsai. It's fall in the bonsai garden here, and uh, it's raining. Uh, this has been a rain that we've been waiting on for a long time. Hey, what I wanna do real quick today is give an update on the uh, elm trees as we put them away for the winter, and um, uh, talk, to, talk about them for a little bit, and then at the very end of this video, I have uh, put some photos of some fall foliage from around the zoo. Um, I hope you'll stick around to the end of the video to uh, look at that. The, the uh, fall color around here was pretty amazing this year. Um, also, uh, if you like the video at the end of it, please hit the like button. And um, I'm planning on doing a Bold Cypress wrap-up video for the year and stuff. So uh, please hit the subscribe button as well. So let me shoot this video here in the rain. And uh, I hope you enjoy the trees. Okay, real quick before I go any further about that, I want to uh, throw up a map of um, the USDA hardiness zones. And for all the beginners out there, uh, uh, it's really important to remember that your bonsai trees are outdoor trees. And so they will they should live outside all summer and they should live outside all winter as well. Of course, there is um, exceptions to that, like your tropical trees don't, um, you know, they have to come inside when it gets cold out. And um, I would say that if you're growing a tree that you know is not really native to the part of the country that you're living in or the area you're living in, check the uh, hardiness zone for that. And uh, it may require um, maybe some uh, more protection in the winter. But um, all of my trees will all, uh, all of my trees will stay outside all winter. Okay, uh, the first tree we're gonna look at is the elm tree that I uh, repotted early in the spring. Uh, I'll throw um, a link up to that video on the top of the screen here. Uh, if you remember right, part of the issue with this um, tree was the uh, nabari down at the end, or sorry, at the bottom of the tree. Uh, we had a little issue with uh, the roots. We got some inverse taper going on there. Um, when it came out of the pot, the roots, I believe, looked pretty good, but we need to uh, work on that a little bit. Um, we had some pretty good suggestions. Um, Matt, I appreciate your uh, comments about the inverse taper. And uh, Matt suggested that maybe um, there could have been better technique in cleaning up some of these uh, scars when I dug the tree. And uh, I think he's right. And um, I appreciate that, Matt. Um, and then also uh, about that, uh, the root base, root flare stuff, um, cats had suggested maybe the tree could have been planted on or should have been planted on maybe a flat tile or a piece of plastic to maybe help with this. And after thinking about that, I kind of like that idea. And next time I uh, repot this tree, I'll probably put it in a larger container, um, a wider container, and then put something underneath of it. And hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get those roots to grow longer, more lateral, and maybe they will help to, um, um, fix that inverse taper issue on the bottom. And then um, Rich had suggested something bold. He suggested maybe coming in here somewhere and um, doing an air layer on the tree. And I also thought that was a great idea, except for right now my air layer success isn't as um, good or as successful as I would like it to be at this time. So I might not go that route, but um, I do appreciate that suggestion. Um, and then just quickly, after I uh, repotted this, of course, I uh, made sure I kept it protected for a while until it leafed out. And uh, it leafed out great. Um, it didn't really grow a lot. Of course, I didn't expect it to. Um, but, you know, uh, we kept a little bit of fertilizer on it and um, just took good care of it this summer. And I expect better things out of it next spring. The next elm we'll look at real quick. Uh, this one was a video titled uh, How to Prune for Branch Thickness. And uh, basically what, uh, what I did in the video was I came up here into the apex and I trimmed the branches back quite a bit and I left all of the branches down here to grow, um, to grow freely and unchecked. We'll let them do that for a couple years. Basically what my goal is, is to get the branches, the lower branches, the, um, I need those to become a little thicker. So the more resources that are pumping through the branches down here um, is gonna make, uh, cause the branch to require more um, avenues to get the resources out there. So that will help thicken the branch. And then of course, 
the less it needs up here, uh, the branches won't, uh, won't grow as fast. So, um, but other, other than that, all in all, um, I really enjoy this tree. I like it a lot. Um, Colin, the hilarious Boston bonsai idiot, commented on this video and he asked about uh, maybe where I got the tree. And for those who don't know, I, uh, I am the horticulturist at Rolling Hill Zoo. And I have the opportunity to um, find great material in some of the gardens. And this particular tree I dug in 2014, all these trees uh, were dug in 2014, uh, but this one came from a garden space in front of the African lion exhibit. Um, around here, the elm trees typically grow straight up and uh, the branches kind of grow up reaching for the sky. This particular tree uh, was growing underneath um, other shrubs, and I think that's the reason for the curve in the trunk. So, uh, Colin, thank you for all your comments on the videos and for your support. Appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> the rain's really picked up now, and my umbrella holder had to take off, so... Okay, this last tree that we'll look at um, is also um, dug from in front of the lion exhibit at the zoo. This was the one I did the emergency repot on. Uh, if you remember, I underestimated the um, integrity of the container that it started at spring in. And um, I think it was around like August 8th or something, I had to um, kind of tear that other pot or container apart and um, I had this one that was the exact same size, so I was able to slip pot it back into place. After I did that, it stayed in the shade for a couple weeks. Um, I tried my best to not disturb any roots on it, and I think I did a pretty decent job, but I just took the precaution anyway to keep, um, kind of keep it out of the elements, because you've heard me say before, it gets stupid hot here in central Kansas in August. And it did. So uh, I think all three of these elms did really well this year. I'm really excited about them. Um, thank you for all your comments on them and suggestions to help move them forward. Um, this tree was fun because uh, Banglin TV channel in Indonesia sent a message. And I had to put it in Google Translate. And I think um, it was suggested we get together for coffee sometime. Well, I love coffee and... I, would, I look forward to the day when I can travel and travel outside the United States, and who knows, maybe we'll have coffee sometime. That'll be great. Anyways, um, please stay tuned for some footage or some photos of the fall colors at the zoo. And uh, until next time, everybody take care and be safe.